The film begins in 1943 with the Allies pushing back the Axis powers in Italy. Frank Stokes persuades President Roosevelt that preserving artistic treasures is crucial for a meaningful victory. Stokes forms an army unit, the Monuments Men, made up of museum directors, curators, art historians, and an architect. Their mission is to guide Allied units and recover stolen art. Meanwhile, in a church in Ghent, Belgium, two priests protect an altarpiece from the Germans. By July 1944, Claire Simon, a curator in France under Nazi occupation is forced to help Nazi officer Stahl steal art for Hitler's planned Führer Museum or for senior Nazi commanders like Hermann Göring. Claire, who works at the museum, hears their plan to move all the art to Germany. Next, we see Lieutenant Frank Stokes showing the American president some of the stolen art. Stokes tells the president that winning the war won't mean much if they lose or destroy the great art of the Western world. Stokes thinks they should use young scholars to find the stolen art but they're all fighting in the war. So the president lets Stokes put together a group of soldiers called the Monuments Men. These men have to find the art that the Nazis stole and give it back to the people it belongs to. Once Stokes has his team together, he explains their mission to them. He talks about Hitler's plan to make a huge museum in his hometown. This museum could be the biggest in the world and would need thousands, maybe millions of pieces of art. Hitler has already taken art from Amsterdam, Warsaw, and Paris. His men are hiding this art and Stokes' team needs to find it. They also need to look for other art before the Germans can take it. They think the Germans might be hiding the stolen art in Hitler's hometown and in the East. After this, the team goes to Normandy, France. The Allied forces there won't let Stokes have more men for his team. They don't want to risk their soldiers for an art mission. So, the Monument's men have to look for the stolen art by themselves. The men split up to search different areas. Meanwhile, Claire comes home and finds Stahl in her apartment. He tells her that someone who was part of the resistance, a group trying to fight against the Nazis, has been killed. Claire's brother tried to steal a truck full of art that was going to Germany. Stahl confronts Claire, saying her brother couldn't have known about the truck unless she told him. Claire is familiar with the museum, the art, the collectors, and she was there when Stahl made a deal with Hermann Goering. Stahl asks if he can search Claire's apartment for any evidence related to what happened. He warns her that if she gets in the way, or if he finds anything against her, she will be given to the SS, the political soldiers of the Nazi party. At the same time, the Monument's men are working on their tasks. James gets to France, and Stokes accidentally meets Sam Epstein, a Jewish officer. With Sam's help, Stokes goes to Lisieux and meets up with an old friend, Major Fielding. Fielding shows Stokes many crates filled with paintings. They got them from Germans who were trying to escape to Vernon. Stokes asks an officer to question the Germans about the paintings, but they don't say anything. Stokes remembers that Sam can speak German, so he signals him to listen to the Germans. Sam stands there, smoking, listening to two Germans who don't know he can understand them. Sam learns from their conversation that they're going to a town called Ziegen. He points out the commander who changed his uniform with his men to avoid being questioned. Sam speaks to the commander in German, saying he'll give him his best when he sees Hitler. The Germans are too shocked to respond. At the same time, Claire tries to stop Stahl from taking all the gallery's art to Germany as the Allies get closer to Paris. She runs to the rail yard to confront him, but can only watch as Stahl leaves on the train. Stahl fires his gun into the air to try to scare Claire, but she isn't scared. Meanwhile, Stokes and Sam arrive at Saint-Lô in France. They meet with some of the Monuments men to come up with a new plan. Stokes sends Preston and Campbell to Ghent, Belgium to get the historical altarpiece. Garfield and Jean-Claude are sent to Aachen, Germany. Donald volunteers to go to Bruges to get one of Michelangelo's famous works, The Madonna and Child. That night, Stokes makes a radio for them to use to talk to each other. He says that people will die, but if their achievements in history are destroyed, it's like they never existed. After hearing this, Jean-Claude talks about how proud he is to be one of the Monument's men. At the same time, James is with a French man named Emile, who he's staying with. The next day, James visits a friend named René, who works with art. René tells him that the National Collection of Art is safe, but the private collection is gone. Hermann Goering took all the art to Germany. James says that the U.S. Army will help them get the art back. Later that day, James goes to an SS prison and asks Claire for help, but she says no. She thinks the Americans want to take the stolen art for themselves. Meanwhile, Preston and Campbell find out that the Ghent altarpiece was taken by two priests to keep it safe, but the Germans found them and took it. The two priests were killed. Preston tells Stokes about the situation and says they'll find another way to get the art. He goes outside for some fresh air, and a young German soldier comes out from behind a tree and points his gun at Preston. Campbell comes outside and sees that Preston is unarmed and facing a German soldier. Campbell points his gun at the soldier and suggests that they all put their guns down and go their separate ways. But the soldier doesn't understand English, so Campbell tries something else. He puts his gun down and lies on the ground, and Preston and the soldier do the same. Campbell throws a pack of cigarettes to the soldier, 
who passes it to Preston after taking one. Preston doesn't smoke, but Campbell encourages him to do it to gain the soldiers' trust. So, Preston smokes with them, and they all fill the air with smoke. After their moment of bonding, the German soldier and the Americans go their separate ways. The next day, while Jean-Claude is talking to a priest, someone starts shooting at them. The priest quickly hides inside the church, while Jean-Claude and Garfield take cover behind the pillars. Jean-Claude tells Garfield to keep the shooter busy while he goes inside the building. Garfield and the shooter exchange fire until Jean-Claude is inside. Jean-Claude looks around the building, trying to find the shooter. After searching the building, Jean-Claude finds out that the shooter is a German boy. The boy gives up because he knows he can't win against Jean-Claude. That night, Donald asks a colonel in Bruges to help protect Madonna and child, but the colonel says they made a promise to the mayor not to go to Bruges. Donald tries to argue, but the colonel says no, they have to keep their promise. Even so, Donald sneaks into a church in Bruges, where some priests are hiding the Madonna and child. Donald writes a letter to his dad about his adventures with the Monuments men, but soon after, the Germans come to the church and take the statue. Donald tries to stop them, but he is killed. That night, while Campbell is taking a shower, Preston receives a message from Campbell's family. It's his daughter and grandchildren singing a Christmas song. Campbell starts to cry because he misses his family. The next day, Claire changes her mind after James shows her the Nero decree. This is a letter from Hitler saying that if he dies or if Germany loses the war, they will destroy all German property, including the stolen art. After this, James sends the letter to the Monuments men who are in Remagen, Germany. Later that day, Preston goes with Campbell to the dentist to have a tooth pulled. The dentist is very friendly and talks to Preston to try to make him feel better. Preston tells the dentist that they collect art in New York, and the dentist remembers his nephew who studied art in Paris. After the dentist pulls out the tooth, they go to the dentist's nephew's house. The nephew is Stahl. Preston doesn't sit down. Instead, he looks at the paintings on the walls. Stahl says they're all copies. While Campbell is talking to Stahl, he notices that Stahl keeps watching Preston look at the paintings. Suddenly, Preston asks Stahl if he knows a collector called Rothschild. Stahl says he doesn't. Preston sits down and shows that one of the paintings has Rothschild's name on the back. Stahl is surprised and laughs nervously. After this, the Americans take Stahl with them. At the same time, Jean-Claude and Garfield get lost in the country. Countryside. They stop their car to pet a pretty horse. Garfield sees some German soldiers hiding in the bushes. The soldiers don't shoot at them right away. They let them get away. But other soldiers hiding in different bushes shoot at Jean-Claude and hit him. Garfield drives away quickly, while Jean-Claude is bleeding a lot. The next day, the rest of the Monuments men, except for James, find out that they couldn't find the stolen art in Ziegen and Merkers because it was hidden in mines. Sam says that every German town has a mine, so they go to the mine in Ziegen and find thousands of statues, paintings, and other kinds of art. Because of this, Stokes writes a letter to James. He tells him about what they found and about the deaths of two of the Monuments men. James is getting ready to leave when he sees Claire in a restaurant. Claire tells him that the Monuments men are in the newspaper. After she finds out that they got the stolen art back from Stahl, she agrees to help James. She asks him to come to a formal dinner at her apartment. That night, during dinner, Claire shares with James all the knowledge she has about stolen art, famous artists, and art thieves. She even gives him her book that has detailed information about the stolen art and who they belong to. She has marked some pieces in the book to match her records. Claire tells James that he should look for most of the art in a castle called Neuschwanstein. After she gives him all this information, Claire tries to get James to stay, but he politely says no and leaves. The next day, James gets to Merker's mine. He finds the monument's men there, busy with the thousands of pieces of art they found. The men greet James, and he greets them back. Then he looks for Stokes. He finds Stokes at the back, working on some art. They talk about finding the Madonna and Child statue, not just for the U.S. Army, but also also for Donald. At the same time, Campbell and Sam find a room full of gold that was meant for the Nazi German National Treasury. This discovery leads to the German government going bankrupt, which makes them lose the war. At the same time, a German officer who was hired walks away from the Heilbronn mine, while two men set hundreds of pieces of art on fire. The next day, the Monuments men get to the mine and find that everything has been burned to ashes. James steps on a landmine by accident, so the men come up with a plan to get him off it. James tells them they can leave him if their plan doesn't work but they choose to stay with him. James gathers his courage and steps off the landmine, causing a small explosion that doesn't hurt them. Even though the mine is damaged, the men stay, hoping to find something they can save. They find barrels filled with gold teeth from the victims of the death camps. After this, the men go to Neuschwanstein and find a castle full of statues and paintings. While they're exploring, they find out that the Ghent altarpiece is in the Altasee mine. So they leave right away and drive to Altasee, Austria. When they get there, they find that the mine is destroyed. The person in charge tells them that the locals bombed the mine to trick the Nazis. He also says that there's a German soldier named Wagner 
who was found hiding in the town. Stokes tells the men to find the locals and get a map of the mine while he talks to Wagner. Stokes confronts Wagner, who is the officer in charge of burning the art. Stokes asks Wagner if he and his men took the art out of the mine. Wagner refuses to give any information because he will be released and sent home according to the Geneva Conventions. After this, a soldier tells the men that they need to find another entrance because they have orders to leave that night since the Soviets will take over the area. The men use an explosive to make a way in. The Russians hear the explosion from far away and start moving towards it. The men quickly start working and save as much art as they can, including Michelangelo's Madonna sculpture and the Ghent altar piece. The men help Stokes move a cart that has the statue on it. They leave Altause just before the Russians get there. After their trip in Germany, the men go back to the U.S. Stokes tells the president that the monument's men found a total of five million pieces of art. All of this art is being given back to the people it belongs to, but Stokes asks if he can stay in Europe to find more missing art. Instead of answering, the president asks Stokes if the art was worth Donald and John Claude's lives. Stokes says yes, it was. The film ends with Stokes, who is now older and retired, in a museum with his grandson and a big crowd. Stokes walks up to Michelangelo's Madonna and Child sculpture. He looks proud as he remembers his men who gave their lives to save the world's most important and amazing art. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.